What's going on everyone? Uh, today I'm going to show you how to install the Grimspeed 3 port electronic boost controller on your 05 to 09 Outback XT or Legacy GT. Um, I'm going to start by popping the hood. As you can see I prefer to uh, put my prop rod in the service position so the hood is more straight up and down as opposed to putting it in the normal spot so I don't hit my head. Gives you a little bit more room to work. Um, your factory controller is right here. It's held in place by a 10 millimeter bolt. Um, if you have an aftermarket or even maybe the OEM one, it might even be difficult. You can't really unplug this when it's bolted on because it hits this port here. So we're gonna go ahead, remove that 10 mil, and then we can disconnect the factory electric connector. Make sure not to lose it. It's a pretty small bolt. And now we can move this out here. All you gotta do is just pinch this tab and pull to separate, which is kinda hard to do with one hand. Ta-da! All right, now you don't really need to mark these because the instructions tell you which way they go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unhook these. They just pull straight off that. All right, so I'm also gonna unhook this sensor here, allow a little bit more room. Um, there's a couple different mounting solutions you can do for this. Uh, I got these printed out directly from Grimspeed when I went to get this thing, because the instructions are not very clear. Uh, as you can see, the first method here, this is the bracket right here. They show that you can mount the bolt through here, so the controller would be something like this. However, they don't supply a bolt and a nut, so if you want to do this method, you have to buy your own bolt and nut, because the factory bolt is very short and threads into the old solenoid. So without a nut, you've got nothing because the new solenoid has no nut in it. So the other method is, as you can see right here, where I'll probably do this one, where you just mount it right here, remove this 10 mil and mount it like that. I'll lose it. Alright, now the one hose that we're going to have to replace goes from the factory uh, elbow here and it's going to connect to port number one on here. So I'm going to probably mount it so that the wiring goes under this sensor like that and angle the controller something like this because this is port one. So if you have it, you know, mounted any other way it's not you're not going to be able to be able to hook it up too well so i'm going to leave it something like this so that i can kind of loop this up and back around to that like i said this would probably be the best area to mount it that'd be the cleanest as far as the hoses go but i don't have any spare nuts and bolts laying around so that's my only option right now and just snug her up doesn't have to be anything too tight All right, now we can plug this sensor back in, making sure we left enough room to plug it in. Make sure you hear it click. See the connector is kind of in the way of this port, so I might try to bend this up a little bit. Something like that. Then uh, we can also plug in the Grim Speed connector to the OEM connector here. Again, make sure you hear it click. You know it's all the way plugged in. That's kind of a weak click, but I heard it. All right, now we just gotta route the hoses. All right, now I already had uh, my intercooler off because I was replacing it with a parent one here before I started making the video. Um, you don't have to remove your intercooler, but it might help you out just a little bit when you've gotta do the plumbing for the vacuum lines here. So if you do need to remove the intercooler, it's just, two 12 millimeter bolts holding it to the turbo. The one, millim or one 12 millimeter bolt holding it to the bracket on the driver's side. You've got your clamp you gotta remove and your hose for your blow off valve. 
and just a little vacuum line for the blow off valve that just unhooks. All right, so here's one of the factory vacuum lines that goes to the factory boost controller. The other one is back here, and if you pull on it, you can see it moving under the intake manifold there. It actually goes over here, and I know it's difficult to see, but tugging on it still, it tees off and goes to the wastegate, and then over to the little nipple on the turbo compressor housing. You can see it right down there. Kind of a pain to get at. So we gotta take those pinch clamps off and remove all this hose. All right, now I just use a pair of these. They're hose clamp pliers. They got a little bit of a bend to them. It's about the easiest thing to use for this. Just gonna come in here, pinch this together. Give her some wiggle, slide it back, like that, and then you can either use the pliers or try to get your fat fingers in there to uh, pull the hose off the wastegate. I think I'll probably have to use the pliers. Like that, and let's try to get this one. That'll be real fun. Why did they make them so difficult to work on? Slide that back. And... There we go. Now, should be able to just pull this end. Oh. Well, that came unhooked. Grab the rest of it out of here. There we go. As you can see, it just came unplugged from the T, which we won't need any of this anymore. But hang on to this piece, because you'll see in a minute why we need it. The instructions say to remove this hose piece going to the intake pipe. And it says to install the factory, or sorry, the supplied four millimeter hose that came with the kit, which is this, but as you can see, this is a little bit too small. It almost goes inside of that. So they want you to run a hose from here to port number one on the boost controller. So we're gonna use this guy with our superior ingenuity, push this onto there. I'm gonna have to use two hands to support this shove this onto there and then loop this back and hook it to port number one so here's port one Just push that right on there like that and then probably tuck this down a little bit and figure out how this is gonna go might have to rotate this or something and then this is still a little bit of a tight fit. So you're gonna to wanna to support the bottom of this while you push down so you don't snap it off. And it's gonna take a little bit of oomph to get this on there. So I'm gonna use two hands now. All right, with a little bit of elbow grease, I got it on there. Um, there's one other option. If you're having a hard time to get this on here, you can actually unhook it from here and it'll pull off of there. And you can take the factory hose that was connected to this that we removed that'll fit perfect because it's kind of flared out designed for this push it back on there and hook this guy up to here but it's not a very tight fit so you'll have to use either a zip tie around here or a hose clamp to make sure it's tight there's no boost here it's just a vacuum but you still don't want this popping off on you all right now the next step is they want you to take the supplied four millimeter vacuum line we're gonna run it under the intake manifold just like that factory one was ran except for it's gonna be more fun to fish through than it was to pull out and we got to hook it to the wastegate nipple 
So as usual, everything's a fight, but uh, with a little bit of swearing and these pliers, I was able to route the hose under the intake manifold. Got it coming out right here. And we're gonna go ahead, use these pliers again, a little bit easier, and put it on the wastegate nipple. And I don't know if this is required or not, but I swapped over the clamps from the factory vacuum lines just to make sure it doesn't pop off. Because I know that this is going to be a little harder to get to once the intercooler is back on. Give it a little bit of a wiggle. Make sure it's all the way on. And try to get this thing on. There we go, that wasn't too bad. Alright, now you want to make sure you've got enough slack. Everything's routed fine, it's not too tight. Not too loose to where it's going to get caught in the belts or anything. And they want this run to port number two, which is this guy. So I'm going to cut it to length and slide it on this barb. Alright, and now because I like to do things a little overkill, I'm probably going to run a zip tie through this hole to hold this vacuum line up. Alright, so I went ahead and I zip tied it up to that bracket there. Um, make sure you don't go too tight with this. As you can see, I got it pretty loose here. Um, you don't want to have it too tight because you'll pinch the vacuum hose shut. And then obviously it restricts flow. So I got that all taken care of and I put a little zip tie on uh, this hose here I was talking about that comes unhooked real easily. So that's all good to go now as well. So we've got only one hose to run, <coughs> one hose left to run and that's going to be the pain in the butt one from the compress compressor housing nipple up to port number three. Now to make things easier I've taken this like screwdriver here and I've pried it got it wedged between the uh, intake bracket here and it's pushing back on this hose keeping it out of the way so I can actually see and get to this thing so that'll help a little bit uh, we're gonna do the same thing as we did for the wastegate hose we're gonna fight it and route it under the intake manifold all right I fought and got it routed under the manifold and now it's time to fight it onto the compressor housing nipple most fun part. Come on. Oh, you suck. Almost there. Always gotta be a fight. Alright, so upon further inspection, the uh, compressor housing nipple is a little bit fatter than the other ones, which is why it's so hard to get the hose and the clamp back on there. But um, with a couple more swear words and determination, I was able to get it on there. Um, I kind of used a uh, flathead screwdriver to pry and push on the pliers as I was wiggling it. So we're done with this now. Hard part's all done. Just gotta cut this to length and hook it to port number three. Now all of this extra you can either get rid of or keep for something else. And there we are, we're all done. Um, like I said, these ports are all barbed fitting, so in theory they shouldn't pop off with the uh, minimal amount of pressure and flow that's gonna be going through them. However, you will have a couple of spare clamps here you can try to use, but as you can see, there's three ports on here. 
only two here so you'll be short one clamp regardless um, I would say if you're gonna use these clamps which I'll probably do use them for ports two and three because those are the pressurized poses this is just a vent back to the intake so this won't have much pressure so I'm actually gonna put these clamps on here real quick and as you can see uh, I got ahead of myself I actually cut this zip tie off because now I have the two hoses here so now I'm gonna zip tie up and hold them both up again making sure not to uh, pinch them and restrict them and there we have it we're all done uh, just to recap um, got the port one going to the intake I used the factory hose for that or the zip tie this is the factory portion that was going back to the turbo just kind of fuse them together zip tie to tighten it up this is the vacuum or the return side so not much pressure don't need a clamp here again port one port three pressure hose got it going to the compressor housing nipple port two also pressure got a clamp on it going to the wastegate nipple hose is secured with a zip tie firmly mounted got the sensor plugged in boost controller plugged in and that's it um, reinstall your intercooler if you remove that uh, I'll put a couple links down in the description where you can get this boost controller if you want it if this video helped you out make sure you hit that like button if you want more videos like this hit subscribe thanks for watching